Good afternoon and welcome to Hope Lives Here. This is Apostle Dolores Kendrick and it is a beautiful day because this is the day that the Lord has made. I trust you're having a beautiful afternoon and just ready to praise the Lord and just enjoy this day that God has given us. I've been talking with you about the Beatitudes which are eight blessings in the Word of God in Matthew's Gospel by Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount and each is a proverb actually a proverb like proclamation without a narrative but we're talking about the third Beatitude blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted how is this Beatitude seen as we look in the life of Christ here, because at the end of Jesus' 40-day voluntary fast, remember, in the desert, angels comforted him. They came and they comforted him in a time of suffering. In the Garden of Gethsemane, after Christ uh, asked the Father, if it be your will, Please remove this bitter cup of suffering to pass from me because he knew what was up ahead. And he was asking his father. And at that time he said, Nevertheless, but thy will be done. And an angel came and strengthened him, comforted him in Luke 22. And then Christ embraced suffering, agony, and finally death on the cross. He was the suffering servant. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 53. Christ's suffering was infinitely valuable and has saved and sacrificed us. Because of his suffering, we are saved. Because he conquered the grave and death, we too have access, hallelujah, to eternal life, don't we? And so, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, in John 14 says, Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. He is the Comforter. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as a gift from God to be our Comforter. Christ promised to be that Comforter of all who turn to Him. The Holy Spirit, He's faithful, saints, and He's the Comforter promised to us. And those of you that do not have the Holy Spirit, who is such a powerful person, the third person of the Trinity, that comes because we have we have had much to mourn for, haven't we? As we look at this verse, uh, uh, this this beatitude, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. All over the world, there has been such over the years such few years, couple of years here, there's been a lot of mourning. In our families, we've had a lot of mourning because we have suffered loss and sickness and diseases and even from others. This is teaching us how to even comfort others because we have suffered much with the death of family members, the loss of friends and loved ones. But Jesus promised us that he shall, we shall be comforted. Tears actually are a sign of suffering, but can suffering give happiness and bless to, uh, blessedness to a man? Not always. But if a man suffers because of visible good things, because of pride, passion, self-love, then these sufferings only torture the soul and there's no benefit in it. But if we accept suffering as a trial that's sent by God, believers, then grief and tears becomes a cleansing and a washing of our soul. And we can find joy and comfort even in, in a time of grief itself. No, when we do things that are wrong and, and we're prideful and we have our own uh, agenda and self-love and everything is self-self, it's difficult to be comforted because we do not have the Holy Spirit within. The Father's 
of the church teach us to distinguish the source of tears. Uh, and because of it, the, the venerable Ephraim, the Syrian, I want to read something that he wrote. He said, with people, there are three different kinds of tears. There are tears for visible things, and they are very bitter and vain. There are tears of repentance, and when the soul desires eternal good things, and they are very sweet and beneficial. And there are tears of remorse, where, according to the Savior's word, there is weeping, gashing of teeth. In Matthew 8, it speaks of that. And these tears are bitter, and they're useless because they're altogether fruitless when there's no longer any time for repentance. But there's tears of repentance, hallelujah, that we have when we can go to the Father. And because of that, out of that comes the comforting hand of God. There is purpose in our pain. God never wastes our pain, someone once said. In fact, there's blessing in our pain and at the time no we don't feel it we do not it, it's painful and it's agony and we weep over it but God blesses the brokenhearted. When Gideon broke the pictures as a symbolism, when he broke the pictures the hidden light began to shine. When those pictures broke there was a hidden light that came forth. When we go through remorse and we have pain and we mourn and we're broken there is a light that can shine forth out of us that we do not even realize when the widow when the poor widow broke the seal on the oil what happened god multiplied it and met her needs didn't he when esther broke the etiquette and protocol risking her life god saved a nation when Jesus broke the five loaves, he fed the multitudes. When Mary broke her alabaster box, the fragrance filled the room. When Jesus was broken by a crown of thorns, nails, and spear, the blood was poured out that cleanses from all sin. God blesses the broken. Yes, he does. When we're broken, and we are in pain, out of that brokenness can come forth a blessing. Remember that song by Andre Crouch? As I was reading this, and I thought about the song, and it said, I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. And there's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. Through it all, oh yes, we remember this, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. I thank God for the mountains and I thank Him for the valleys. I thank Him for the storms He's brought me through. For if I'd never have a problem, I wouldn't know God could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God could do. So through our brokenness, through our pain, through our mourning, through our loss, as we're broken before God, out of it comes, hallelujah, the comforting hand of God. Matthew 5 says, they shall be comforted. There is no maybe or I might. It is a promise of God for us. God promised reward to those who mourn. It will be worth it all. It will be. We cannot see it many times at that time. It takes time. But out of that comes forth a newness such as we have never seen. No, we do not understand um, it all, but we know the comforting word of the Lord is forever with us, saints. And he will turn our sadness into joy. And we will break forth into dancing. Hallelujah. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion 
on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. My prayer for you, those of you that have been broken by, with the pain of loss and sicknesses, your loved ones are gone, friends are gone that you will never see again on this earth. I speak to that brokenness, that out of that will come forth the peace of God. Out of that will come forth the light that will shine out of your darkness and spring forth, hallelujah, as springs of water that come forth and will spill over you and bring peace and joy and gladness, hallelujah, to your very soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. I thank God for you all, and I just love you all, and I just want you just to have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day, and walk in victory. Amen.